Hi, Shannon. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to get my bike right now, Xander. I'll come over and we'll wrestle. Let's wrestle. You can pin me to anything. Oh, 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 The sound of your holy name. Okay, so what's the report? I'll give the report between the pylons. I'll give the report between the pylons. Right now, I just want you to take it in. I just want to take it in. New York. Listen to the soft sounds of the waves lapping against the shore. Imagine me naked on a beach, on a beach in Brooklyn, with red shoes on. Girlfriend, girlfriend, life, life keeps happening anyway, right? This is New York. Ain't nobody got time for that shit. Get out in the sunshine, ride your bikes. Walk on the bridge. No mask necessary outside in the sunshine. Oh yeah, yeah, masks. Masks and gloves and bandanas, and bikers and joggers. On my stomach, I call it my flying beat. And every time I show it, I can feel it rise on me. How many islands will fall to the blunderbuss? And how long it will it be to show your face to us? Ah, ah. Have you guys all walked this bridge before? Where are you? <laughs> have you all walked this bridge before? Sure you have. Sure you've walked this bridge before. <laughs> look, look everybody. It's Statue of Liberty. Have you been here? <sighs> That's for you, Jeff Haber. There you go. A little Statue of Liberty goodness. Statue of Lip. Let me see if I can. Nope. Everything's still shaky. Fuck it. Shaky. Fuck, fuck. What else do you want to see? Oh, well, you want to look over the cars. You want to avoid the bikes. You want to look at Manhattan Bridge. I'm sure you want to see the Empire State Building. Fuck. And these new fucking skyscrapers. Hi, Jorge Clark. Check it. And our good friend, the river. Hello, river. Hello, river. Fucking hell. All right. So I'm going to walk without my mask on for a minute. Risk death. Um, no, maybe I shouldn't do it. 
I'm setting a bad example. Although there's lots of people without masks. I'll put it back on. So you can hear me fine without my mask on. It's with my mask on. It's fine. So here's the report, right? The bridge. Our good friend, the river. So here's my report. So look, it's a nice spring day. I woke up this morning. It was cold as fuck for me. I was all thinking, I'm gonna go out in the backyard and do Qigong in the sunshine. But there was no sunshine and it was 54 degrees. And uh, 54 degrees, 54 degrees, right? I've been in like, the coldest it has gotten for the last month and a half is 77 degrees where I've been. So, and it doesn't stay that way very long. It's been like 90 degrees. So I was really cold this morning and could hardly move for a while. And that was fine. I think it's totally fine to hardly be able to move for a while. Um, so eventually I got myself moving. I got myself, uh, did some Qigong. And then I started looking at Facebook and this didn't really clock into my head until later, but I'll say it now because that's when it happened. Uh, when this whole pandemic-y thing started getting real, I had this weird anxiety fear thing of like, who is going to be the first person that I actually know that I have met and spent time with who dies of COVID-19, right? Maybe you guys have already answered that question for yourself, maybe you haven't, but it was a very strange, like unique, it was a new anxiety to me. Like, who's it gonna be? Um, and while I've been away, I've seen people on Facebook who have tested positive or were certain they had, certain they had it, um, but they all survived. A friend of mine who was like 76, 78, what the fuck was he, 74, and um, has had health problems for a year, in and out of hospitals, rehab, got septic, burr, 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 burr. he tested positive because his home health aide brought it to him, so I thought he was gonna die, but he didn't. He's fine, fine as anyone is right now. And uh, a couple different people I know have tested positive, but there's a kid, a guy, he's not a kid, he's a couple, I don't know, a decade older than me, um, Giovanni Sorrentino, Italian fellow, short, cute, uh, brat bear, he's a hairdresser. Uh, I saw on Facebook this morning that he died. He'd been in, I think in and out of the hospital, but had been in the hospital for like a month. Like it just, he kept, he would feel better and then he'd feel worse and he'd feel better and then he'd feel worse. Um, and I can't say I was really tight with Giovanni. I've met him, I've spent time with him. I had sex with him once. Um, I know people who know him. He's like a part of the world that I move in. Um, but I've actually met him in human life as a real human, like a personal interaction, and he died. So I think it's kind of telling that as soon as I get back to New York was the first time I'm like, oh, okay, here's the first person that I know of. Here's the first person that I've, I've physically met. Because I've heard, I mean, I certainly know people who know people who have died, but this is the first person that I knew personally who died. So then I was talking to a friend of mine who's kind of a lover, a sex buddy, who's an Orthodox Jewish guy, and I've kept in touch with him while I was away in Mexico. But this morning when we were talking, I said, um, I told him about this, and he said, do you have any idea how many people I know personally who have died? And you know, he's an Orthodox Jewish guy in Brooklyn, so I was like, I don't know how much. And he's like, well over 100, and I was like, you personally well, you personally know well over a hundred people who have died. And he said, yes. Um, he said there's a website of all, all the Orthodox Jewish people. No, she's calling to someone else. Um, who have died uh, personally over a hundred people. And he said there's a website of, of the Orthodox Jewish community that has like 780 people that have died basically based in the New York, um, in the New York Jewish community. Um, he said that in Brooklyn, they're so overwhelmed or they have been so overwhelmed that uh, uh, 
they take people into the hospital, they never take their clothes off, they never put an IV in them, they just leave them in a corner and they die. Uh, you know, who knows about the reality of this, but he knows this is his reality. Um, you know, and I've heard, again, there's a lot of gay guys who have been associating this with the AIDS, height of the AIDS days of just everybody you know dying. But again, personally, I don't know anybody, I didn't know anybody who had known that many people who died. And again, I've been talking to this guy for months and he was like, oh yeah, one of my best friends just died a couple days ago. My rabbi just died yesterday. My cousin died three days ago. He said every time he goes into Shabbos, which they're not allowed to use their phones, um, every time they go, he goes into Shabbos, he gets like a panic attack a few hours before he has to turn his phone back on, knowing like he's gonna find out a bunch of people have died or something. So I was like, wow. It's an intense reality. Now, I hadn't left the house until right now. Uh, and yesterday when I arrived, there were certainly not a lot of people out. But today, yesterday it was rainy and cold and windy. And today is, it's not exactly warm. It's like 63 or something. But that's probably, you know, it's late May. For some reason, I always think it should be warmer by now, but it's not. Um, and, uh... There's fucking tons of people out. Fucking tons of people out. Fucking tons of people out. And as you see, they're in various states of <laughs> dress and undress, fashion masks, biking, uh, gloves, masks, no masks, nothing. So, I don't know, this is the reality here. I noticed yesterday that going through the airports, you know, I spent two days going through three airports and um, I spent two days going through three airports and it was terrifying. Like literally it was like I was being, being put in a bath of terrifying fear. Um, people like a lot of people wearing these whole like plastic face mask things like sneeze guards. Um, yeah, yeah. Hey man, I'm not shaming. I want I'm not shaming at all. I'm totally not shaming at all. I think people should be out in the sunlight. I'm glad people are out. I think it's fucking great. I don't know, you know, about this situation of being on the bridge and wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. I have a friend who's really asthmatic. And as long as I've known him, he's talked about like putting a scarf on makes him feel like he's gonna choke. So he never puts anything around his throat. And uh, he, you know, putting a mask on makes it hard for him to breathe. So he doesn't fucking wear the mask very often. He says he keeps a bandana around his throat, like hanging loosely down here. And if he gets near people, he puts it up over his face. Um, so I don't know, I, you know, again, my whole take with the mask, I see most people wearing it wrong. They leave their nose hanging out or they're wearing it like this. You know, most people are keeping their masks wrong anyway. Um, and like a mask like this, it doesn't protect me at all. I mean, maybe a little bit. It keeps direct, direct spittle from other people hitting me directly. But I think it's just two layers of cloth. Um, I'm gonna go get a bunch of masks from Tony. I'm going to Tony's house right now. And he's gonna give me a bunch of masks that people have made him. And I'm ordering fashion masks from Castello Tegli Pietra. Castello Tegli Pietra! The Italian fashion bears. Fashion bears! Yes, it's a consideration for others, as, as Jorge says. And so, like, I think it's most important to wear the mask as a... Uh, as a... Uh, what do you call it? Um, to wear the mask as a... Stay, a show of solidarity with other people's fear and concern um, if I'm wearing the mask, I show people that I'm, I'm respecting the level of fear they're in, you know? Uh, it's not about me, it's about them. And I think that that is... I think that is a nice thing to do. And that was just a nice guy to look at, so I had to put him on camera. <laughs> we all have our types. Look guys, it's New York City. Walking in Brooklyn Bridge. That is nice. Brooklyn Bridge. Um, so it's like, well, no, it's compassion. Yes, it's a performative element. Um, 
I don't know if compassion is part of the word. Yeah, compassion is part of the word. The people are suffering and knowing that this makes people feel a little bit safer and understanding that just because I don't know p people personally who have died or I just, my first personal person has died. Um, but one of my friends has known over a hundred people that he knew personally dead. And he, you know, he's gone to countless funerals, but there's even been more funerals that he couldn't go to, he said, you know? And that, that's something worth respecting, you know? The, this is, you know, one of the things that's the biggest shock for me, where he's like, blue skies, blue skies. One of the things that's the biggest shock for me is just understanding that this is the consensus reality, which is what I've always called reality. I've always thought in my head, reality's consensus reality. Um, it's what we're all agreeing to the terms of interaction. You know, I want to be a nudist. I want to walk around naked. You can't do that in a city. You have to wear shirts, shoes, and blah, blah, blah to get it, you know, to get people to sell you shit. Um, but that's only certain cultures. You can go into other cultures and do whatever the fuck you want. There's just lots of different cultures in the world. Uh, and being where I was in this wonderful bubble I was in, I was able to live a completely different way. Yep, PPE. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's th that's what I'm seeing is that we're it, this is the like new reality of fashion masks and um, we're all just kind of waiting for the new story to unfold of like how long are we gonna have to do this? Are we gonna have to do this for everybody? Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. I'm, I'm here to see the theater, damn it. Where the, where's the theater? Where's the theater? Secret theaters. All the theaters are inside our minds right now, inside of our screens. Our public performative spaces are on the streets. But I am really happy to see people out on the streets right now. Again, I don't think it's healthy for people to be isolated. Uh, I, feel, I feel like it's super healthy for people to get sunlight and fresh air. So I'm really glad to see a bunch of people out on the bridges. Um, there's tons of people biking on the walk here. Uh, there were lots of people in, in Dumbo, lots of people down along the, the riverside, the Brooklyn waterfront. So that makes me feel really good. Oh, New York. And I haven't cried from being in New York. Ah, ciao, yeah. Ciao, Francesco. You see, tutto bene. I, uh, qui. Si, tutto bene. Yeah, la, la, la gente, la gente vivono. La gente vivono. Because we have to, we have no other choice. Devo. <laughs> Devo no vivono. I don't know how to say it. I wish I could fucking speak Italian better. Siamo Francesco! And Brooklyn loves you, Francesco. We're in Manhattan now. Wow, the people of New York, man. So yeah, I don't know. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to uh, be able to spend some time here. Again, part of my consideration when my, the friends I've talked to here have said, how long are you staying? Um, and I'm like, it's not a good place for me to be right now because I can't give massage to people in this environment we're in. Um, I mean, I don't know, should I wear a mask and massage somebody? Somebody sent me a joke video of like somebody giving a massage to somebody with hand sanitizer and like rubber gloves on the end of sticks so you can keep six feet away from them and masks and all this shit. And it's not cute, you know, I don't wanna, out of my greed of making money, um, prey on people's need for touch and put anybody at risk. 
Because, you know, it's as simple as that. As soon as you start working on a whole bunch of different people, you're just a disease vector. <laughs> it's just like, as soon as you start being physically intimate with a whole bunch of people, you're a disease vector. Hi, bear. That's a nice bear. Hi, bear. Um, I should massage you. Yeah, I should massage everybody. I wish I could massage everybody. But, but I can't massage everybody. That's not my... Uh, it's not the reality I'm in right now. I wish I could. I love giving massage. But anyway, the point I was making is that I can make a lot of money here and, and living here is, is usually fine for me, better than a lot of people I know because I can make money here um, when I'm here because there's so many people who always want a massage. But right now I shouldn't. So apart from if I could or not, I shouldn't. So I want to be here for just a week or less. I've scheduled myself to get an antibody test on Thursday. Um, and I might get one even earlier if I can go to my regular doctors, although they've outsourced all the blood work, so I don't know what that reality is. Um, so that's what I know, is I'm gonna be here probably until Friday or Saturday, and then go to Indiana. But I do love seeing, I mean, it's like that, that New York thing where I just love seeing all the different types of people here all doing their story and their clothes and the way they move their bodies. And that may sound funny, but like, it just makes me laugh and joy, L laugh in so many different ways to watch the way people move their bodies here. I think it's hilarious. The way they dress, the, the fashion sense. And of course, you know, you get into like the, the terror, terror fashion sense. Even that people are paying attention to. Look, it's green, guys, it's spring. Look, it's green, guys, it's spring. This shit. Oh my God, I would love matcha ice cream. I wonder if that matcha ice cream place is open. <laughs> there's a, uh, in Chinatown, there's this matcha, matcha ice cream place that makes really amazing pancakes on Saturdays, but it's Sunday, so it's probably not. They're probably not making them today if they're even open. Oh. Little kids and squirrels. <laughs> squirrels on the benches. Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm sure there are some ice cream places open. Calexico, I went to Calexico yesterday, I ate at Calexico after the little video I did yesterday, and they said um, that they opened the day before. So there's a lot of places opening up again. You know, I probably should go this way if I want to get ice cream. It's Manhattan, yo. New York. I'll pause there for a minute. Tony, do you wanna do you wanna get out of your apartment and walk and meet me somewhere? Do you wanna get out of your apartment and walk and meet me, or do you want me to just meet you at your apartment, Tony? You know how you can tell visitors to New York, they're always looking up. <laughs> I've never really lost that thing. I guess when I stay here too long I forget to look up. Look, there's New Amsterdam. Hi, New Amsterdam. Hi, lady with that mask. Hi, man with the mask. Reed Street. Okay, should I keep doing this? You guys enjoying this or should I cut it off? Ah, it's so nice to look up at buildings. Jorge Clar, I love you. <laughs> good boy. You're a good boy, and I love you. Look at that cute little church. Is this 
five points. I think this is what used to be five points. Carry on, carry on. I love you too. I think I'm trying to get to Baxter Street if I remember correctly. Man, so one of the things I'm noticing being here, the fucking pavement is so hard. I've been walking in sand for months. And so I just keep having to like change the way I'm walking because I'm like, ow, ow, ow. They put more bounce in my butt. Wait, so Tony, do you want me to meet you at your apartment or do you want to meet me out somewhere? What's this called? This is called Foley Square. Foley Square is what five points was? Five points east. The hell is that symbol about? Who knows? Foley Square, historic five points. The true administration of justice is the firmest pillar of good government. Yeah, tell that to fucking President 45. Supreme Court, Center Street. Yes, sir. I'll see you there, Tony. Hi, Jimmy. You guys hear the birds singing? It's not really the ocean waves, but there are birds singing here. There's a man who, who's he's preaching, preaching to no one. It's good. That's how you know when you're back in New York, when there's people being like, I'm going to tell you all something true. It's always has something to do with Jesus. I, rah, 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 rah. It's usually angry. Oh, look at this. Worth Street is the avenue of the strongest. Did you know? That sculpture honors the African slaves who were brought to New Amsterdam. Thank you, Tony. Did you just look that up or did you know it? Huh. The African slaves who built New Amsterdam. Thank you, Dutch people. People's houses. So yeah, the Brooklyn Bridge is really busy, but these streets are pretty quiet. Yeah, I've heard that birds are less stressed. That's nice. Maybe people are taking all the stress from the birds back onto themselves. How are you guys feeling? Are you guys still feeling stressed out? Um, I'm definitely noticing that I'm at a higher stress level right now, but that could just be the traveling through the airports, the adjusting to the new consensus reality. Um, are you finding that you've relaxed or are you still stressed out? Like, are you finding that you have a, I think I spent a night in jail here once. I think this is the jail. How exciting. I spent a night in jail here once. Ah, oh, the plaque. The plague. Jorge, what are you saying no about? Oh, not so much stressed as yearning to go back to normal. Be careful about that yearning, Gregory, because normal wasn't very healthy. I would encourage you, if you can, I, I, I honor your yearning for normal, but it was an illusion. And <laughs> like the slaves that it took to build New Amsterdam, normal was, was functioning because of a lot of terrible injustices. So um, maybe... We're probably not going to get to perfection or anything, but let's just dream up other ways that reality could be that are not normal. I don't think we can go back to normal anyway, so you should just give that up because we can't go back. There is no going back. It's impossible not to burst your bubble. Traveling is very stressful. Um, traveling is pretty stressful anyway, yeah, but it's also fun, and usually there's a lot of beauty. This has definitely been higher on the just, you know, I'm not pleasure traveling right now. I'm not pleasure traveling. Is there anybody doing Qigong or Tai Chi in the park? This is where Montauk Chia got his start, I think. There's still a lot of people in the park. 
with masks under their chin. <laughs> Such empty. You know, Joseph, I don't know when you signed on, but um, Brooklyn Bridge is pretty packed. Not like normal Memorial Day packed, but really pretty, pretty packed. Oh my God, I'm down in Chinatown. I love you, Chinatown. I could go get durian ice cream. Montak Chia was saying that there was nobody buying any of the fruit in Thailand. Like the durians and mangoes were just rotting on the ground. Um, oh, that's... Mulberry Street's usually my favorite to walk on, but it's got everything closed. Huh. I guess I'll just stay on Baxter. Yeah, this is where I spent the night in jail once. Yay! Shoplifting teenager. Shoplifting teenager. Do we need any Chinese herbs? Does anybody, Tony, do you need anything from Chinatown? Jorge, do you need anything from Chinatown? I could pick up little Ningjong tablets. Hmm. We speak. Bafar Americano. Hmm. Muncie, Indiana is normal. Who knows, Jimmy, everything's changing. Everything's opening up. Everybody's going back to normal. Everybody's fine. Okay, no, that's not true. But this is a lot more alive than Cancun was. I don't know if you guys saw like where I was walking around in Cancun. Everything was closed. There was, no, actually there were a couple restaurants open. There's a hell of a lot more people out right now than there were in Cancun. But it's a nice day, so. Cancun has endless nice days compared to this. Everything's coming up roses. Oh. Leave it to you, Hori Clock. Uh, Jorge, let me go around the corner real quick. I think it's right up here. Okay, I've got the I've got the go, so I'm gonna go across. Going across Canal Street, jogging, jogging. Damn it, it turned sideways again. Well, I guess that's the end of our walk. I'm going to this ice cream store. It's right here. If they're open, I'm gonna get some ice cream. Oh my god, I could get a foot rub. Ooh. I don't know if that sounds like a good idea. Oh, they are open. Okay, so I'm gonna end the call here. Love you guys. Uh, donuts, 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 and ice cream. I'll chat with you later. Try this, the donut, the dough club. Huh. Maybe it's not the same place it used to be. Everything changes, who the fuck knows? But mochi donuts are awesome, so I'll have some mo mochi donuts. Do you want some mochi donuts? <laughs>